Today on the program, we're going to review Views Field View. We're going to install that first. We're going to go over to Drupal.org. Going to get that and uh, we're going to install it using Composer. This allows you to put a view inside of a view. Our demonstration today is going to focus on um, events. So let's say we had an event and we wanted to determine whether that event was in the future or it was in the past. Uh, it's kind of hard to do that with uh, vanilla Drupal. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify the view a little bit to have a view inside of a view where we are going to pass off a date and the date is going to tell us you know, whether or not it's going to be a, um, you know, a future date or, or a date in the past. Basically, the logic is going to be such that uh, if the, the date is past uh, or date is in the future with a um, a filter that says, you know, is this, this is going to be either you know, e equal to or greater than now, um, it's future. Um, if not, then it's going to return no results and a no result statement is going to be past event. All right. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, uh, going through and I'm going to get the um, module in my contrib directory. Um, unfortunately, the uh, composer is not working, so I'm just going to do this manually and you know do my whole uh, tar runs up and all that good stuff. So while I'm doing that, um, let's get this cleaned up. And now that we have the module in there, let's go back to our Drupal. This is just, by the way, uh, vanilla Drupal. Uh, just installed it, so everything should be cleaned out, nothing else. I'm going to enable my view. Now that it's enabled, I'm going to go and uh, go into my views. I'm going to just start my view. I'm not going to finish it. I'm just going to get it started here. I'm going to call this events. So what we need to do now is we need to create the content type that we're going to use. We're going to just create a content type called um, event. So let's do that. And we're going to go down and dirty with this uh, content type. We're going to just leave the body field. Who cares? We're going to add another field. We'll call this the date field. And we'll just uh, do the date only and not worry about the time. Save our settings here. And just because I got OCD, I'm going to put this in order. All right, now I'll save that. All right, so now I'm going to create a couple of event content uh, nodes here. And uh, let's see, we'll just call this uh, example past date. Now let's just set our date sometime in the past. Just randomly pick one here. All right, there it is. Now let's go and let's create another one. Let's make this one a future event. Call this example future date. And you guessed it. We're going to do the same thing as we did the last time. We're just going to pick a future date. So we go to the main page. There it is. Just right out of the you know, cage there. It's just a default everything. So let's go back to our view, the events view here that we created a minute ago. And uh, let's create a block because we're going to just add this to the uh, to just to a page here, um, and we'll call this the uh, display block. We we'll just call the title events. You don't have to really put anything in for this demonstration, but we will because we're friendly people. Now let's create an embed, and uh, this embed uh, will be it will determine the whether it's past or future. So back at our main block, let's add the content type events. And there they are. Those are the two that I just put in. So, so far so good. We haven't messed this up just yet. All right, so we're going to add the date.
There we go. There's the date. But we need another date, a date that we're going to pass to our embed, and our date is going to determine whether that's a future date or, or not, you know, by the logic that we set up in the embed. So let's exclude this from our display here. We'll just call this the date pass through, just so I can keep my head straight. So now what we're going to do is going to uh, do the view in the view. So this is how we include the embed into our view. And this embed is just going to either say upcoming or pass. I mean, you can tell it to say whatever you want, but for the sake of this demo, that's what we're going to do. This will allow us to uh, uh, make it all nice and neat. So let's say, for example, that we're creating a card. And... A card, let's just say for a second here, has got a picture in it, it's got a title, and it's got a description. But yet, you know, we've been, you know, through uh, you know, our build requirements, um, we need uh, something in the top left corner, you know, and a little tag or something like that that says, uh, you know, we need, um, you know, we need to say whether or not, you know, uh, put some sort of label on it, whether or not it's a future or a past event. So, well, this is why we're doing this. By the way, I found an issue with the views field view module. As you can see, I'm selecting, uh, but it's not allowing me to do anything. Uh, and I found the way to get it to finally work is to just select the view uh, events and then save it. Because every time I, you know, as master, right? Because every time I tried to save it with the display, it just kept giving me an error. So if I just save it as master, saved it, and then went back, changed it, why? I have no idea, but that's the way you got to go to get it to work. So <clears throat> let's do uh, a pager. Um, and it's kind of dumb because. Um, well, we don't need to show all results. We need to show one result. Just keeps it from showing too many. For whatever reason. Because you know views have a mind of their own. So the view, or I'm sorry, the display for embed is going to have a uh, future event. So if, if it comes back, it returns true, it's going to say future event. And of course, you, like I said, you could put whatever you want as a return. Um, but that's, that's what it's going to return. If, if um, you know, we pass the, um, the, the content information from one uh, um, display type to another, um, and like, it returns true, you get your future because what we're trying to do is is filter it out so we have a a future um, and if of course if there's not a future if it's the the filter fails or it's a false then it just returns you know whatever the um, no results return is in this case we'll just put you know something about past so uh, in this one of course we need to create a contextual filter and this contextual filter will be our date now if we just put the date from our display block and pass that through well that wouldn't work too well because you know the timestamp might not be in the right format so what we need to do for the content ID from the URL um, to work properly we need to put the date in a proper format so our display date that we have in the display block as you can see there, uh, you know, we might have that in a, in a particular format. We want to see the, the day of the week and month, the day in the year, maybe the time, whatever. But all we need to do is pass the date. And we're going to pass the date in a format that is year, month, and day. All, all digits. So it's going to be capital Y um, hyphen lowercase m hyphen lowercase d. So we're going to put that pass-through field in our contextual fil filters pass-through. <laughs> Save that. I 
and we'll do custom. Custom with, like I said, capital Y, lowercase m, lowercase d, dashes in between. Easy peasy, let's save that. I like to save my view on multiple occurrences. So look, we got two futures, right? One of them's a past, and one of them's a future. So for whatever reason, it's passing. Don't know why. So let's figure this out. Let's put our pass through up top. Let's get our our fields in a order that best suits this block. All right, well, let's check this out. Everything looks okay here. Let me make sure I got the right uh, field going through. Maybe I'm doing something wonky, who knows. So what is the issue? Let's un check the box so that we can have our data. All right, so there's the date. That's what we want. We want the year, yeah, numeric year, numeric month, and numeric day. All that's good. And you can see one's in the future, one's in the past. So let's put that in as our preview. And all right, well, that's not right because, oh, that's in the past. It should say past. So how are we going to fix this? a little bit of troubleshooting. Well, gee whiz, we forgot to put a filter in. So that filter is going to be our date field. And our date field is going to be greater than or equal to now. So let's save that again. Let's see what happens here now. There we go. Future event and past event. Now it's working properly because it's failing if it has a past date, which is what we want it to do. So let's create a basic page. And this is where we're going to slap our, our block just to give it a try and see. And we'll call this page the list of events. <laughs> so we'll go to structure and then block layout. And then we'll go down to content and we'll add our block that we created from our view. Everything looks cool here. Let's change that. We'll put this underneath our uh, main page content. There we go. We'll save it at the bottom. Voila. Now let's go back to the site. There we go. We have our future and our past. And they both have their respective definition of whether or not it's a future or past event. Let's create some more events. Because, you know, I know we all love to create more things we can add on our demo. Yeah, this one's called the um, Another Future Event. And we'll put that in the future. And everything looks good. Everything looks good. Let's do uh, another uh, past event. Just so that we can be repetitive and redundant as much as possible. Let's just go back in the past, just pick up a random date. <clears throat> Save it. Now there we go. But here's the thing, not everything is in order. You notice that? I mean, everything's legit. I mean, we got fat, uh, future event and past events, you know, correlating with the proper events, but we need to put these in order. So what we need to do is, uh, we need to clean this up a little bit. Let's get rid of that uh, exposed pass-through date and let's remove the sort criteria and let's add a sort that is for the date. We're going to make this uh, sort descending because we want the nearest date or most future date first all the way down to the past. You see, and now it's laid out properly. Let's save it and go back and look at our node. Here we go. Everything is in the proper order. Everything is looking nice and neat. Past events. Now all we got to do is just theme this out 
so that we can have it as pretty as we want. You know, if we want our cards or whatever else like that, we can implement Bootstrap. But that's it. Nice and easy. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe.